From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Multinational General Electric, in partnership with non-profit organizations FHI 360 and Protec, as well as the Gauteng Department of Education, officially launched the Next Engineers program in Johannesburg last month. A $2.5 million investment aimed at increasing the diversity of young people in the engineering sector. Tasneem Bubulia tells us more. The program will provide more than 3,500 learners between the ages of 13 and 18 with hands-on exposure to engineering concept and careers and, ultimately, award financial support to students pursuing engineering degrees. General Electric South Africa CEO Nampini Mabunda expands on the program as well as why Johannesburg was chosen as one of the cities to host it. So Next Engineer is a global program launched by GE Foundation. It's currently being piloted in four cities and the aim of the program is to transform the face of engineering by having more diversity from ethnicity and gender worldwide. We recognize that the world needs more engineers to solve problems of the future, to drive infrastructure and to drive economic growth. And for that to happen, we need to uh, intervene at a high school level, which are the foundation years, uh, to get more people interested in engineering. So the program is designed in three phases. One is engineering discovery, which is to raise awareness and interest in engineering. The second part is engineering camps, where we take students to week-long camps for immense, to immerse them into the world of engineering, and they can work on projects, design some stuff, to see practically how engineering works. And the last part is uh, the academy, where we now take successful students and we sponsor them to continue into university and become real engineers. We decided on this program as GE about 18 months ago uh, when we thought uh, the foundation focus needs to go into uh, emerging markets and also into education. And it was a no-brainer for us because GE is one of the largest employers of engineers in the world because of the type of work that we do. So um, to perfect it and make sure that it works very well, even though we decided to do it in 25 cities, we, we, we thought let us pilot it in four cities to really learn and, 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 and improve on the, on, the, on, the, on the paper design to make sure that it works okay. So the four cities that were chosen out of 25 to pilot um, are two in the US and one in the UK and then Johannesburg. So, um, so far, because of the school calendar system, all other three cities have launched uh, because they start their school year in August, September. And we, were, we are the last as Johannesburg to launch uh, because we start our school year in January. So you want to coincide the program with the intake of the school so that you can work on that calendar. The three cities are doing very well um, so far. In all cities, we are oversubscribed. Uh, the camps have been going extremely well. And we have an advantage in Johannesburg that going last means that we don't have to repeat the mistakes of the others. For us, uh, number one, YGE in Johannesburg is because of our heritage. We talk to the heritage that we have in the country and the fact that it was the first international market. Um, we've been here for over 120. We already have the reach and the footprint uh, with the community because we've been involved in many demonstrable projects in different communities. But we also could demonstrate the need for more engineers uh, and, and how South Africa as a country is big on diversity. We are one of the most diverse countries in the world and we celebrate that diversity. Uh, so that played a big role um, in our favor. And, and of course, because we have tangible projects and engineers who could support uh, the, the, the kids and work with. But I think the last part, which is very, very important, and not necessarily all the cities get that benefit, is the partnership that we have with the Department of Education. Because we didn't want this program to be a standalone, but to add to what is happening. The role for the department for us is to guide us in terms of where there is a need. One of the things in the, pro, in the program design is that 
We don't want to go to preach to the converters. We want to go to schools that do not produce uh, a very good pass rates on science and mathematics. We want to go to schools that do not have facilities in poor areas that are really disadvantaged and yet they have got the potential. We don't know those schools, but the department does. So really looking at the profile of schools, the districts and so on, and say, this is where you can go and, and find these students. As you can imagine, with the population of high school in, in, in Johannesburg, uh, frankly, there's a lot more students that need this than we have space for. We only took 550 at this stage, and you can imagine the, the place where we could get them, there's so many. So the guidance to make sure that we get those who are most needy, but are also have the greatest potential, that is the one part. The second part is that we wanted to add to what the department is doing rather than duplicate. And therefore, we sat with them to look at the curriculum, and they helped us design our curriculum to make sure that how does it add um, to that. And then obviously, through, through logistical, practical things like when is the best time to do it uh, during the day for the kids to be exposed because of their other workload, because they don't want to make it all impossible. So all of that work and guidance, and obviously sharing the lessons they have from programs like um, schools of specialization, where they already have engineering schools, to say what are some of the learnings and some of the mistakes they've made so that we don't repeat the same, we're actually incremental and transformative rather than try and duplicate. Mabunda outlines the benefits the program would engender. The first one is that we are being deliberate about exposing people who are not previously exposed to engineering. So we are going to fish in different places to what typically people will go into so that we, we, we make engineering understood and fashionable to people who were previously not exposed. These are the kids in schools in Deep Slot, in Alexandra, and whatever, who will interact with some of the best engineers in the world because these engineers work for GE and they'll go in there. So that is number one. Uh, we're exposing new audiences. The second benefit is that we are deliberate about the girl learner. 11% of engineers today are women. In our intake for the first cohort, 60% are girls. You know, so that's very deliberate to say we cannot continue in the world where engineering is seen as a men's uh, field. And as GE, we've been very involved in driving diversity in engineering, even amongst your, 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 your professional engineers uh, by, you know, uh, we've got programs for that because today we don't have enough across the various fields. So that is the second big benefit that we really are going to change the face of engineering and exposing that interest and driving it. The third part, it's always the practical side of things. Um, learning by doing exposing the kids to the projects that we do. They can go to an airport hangar and participate in a, 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 a repairing or a maintenance of an aircraft engine. They can go to some of the power stations and see how a turbine looks like and observe the repairing of it and understand. That practical experience is what kids remember for the longest time and that's what impacts the, 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 the memory and the interest and passion and ignite the passion. So for us, that is a very big benefit. Last but not least is the financial contribution. We know that there's more people who have potential and talent to do something but just don't have the funding. So a big part of this program is we're going to sponsor 150 students with $6,000. Uh, buzzers to go into in study engineering. Of course, it's a drop in the ocean, but every bit helps because that is quite a significant amount. Also present at the launch was Gauteng Education MEC Panyaza Le Sufi. He outlines the significance of the program for the country. Well, to me, it's just to strengthen the foundation of human development in our country. Uh, uh, we relied mainly on precious stones like your gold, diamonds and other things. But in future, I have to rely on human capital. And this program of future engineers uh, plays in that particular space so that we can have a new breed of engineers who will design things, who will service our country, but most importantly, who will create opportunities for other young people. 
And I'm glad that they're attracting almost 60% of uh, girl children. Uh, that's a very important aspect because it means that, uh, you know, when you train a woman, you train a nation. Uh, uh, so, so, so this aspect therefore excites us. We know that it will uh, replicate itself and it will ensure that uh, future learners have interest on the program. Le Sufi also speaks on the success of the Gauteng Department of Education Schools of Specialization. We never thought we'd have uh, those kind of schools. Now that we have them, they're active, operational, it excites us. Uh, we have identified a new breed of uh, schools of specialization. The team is doing the mapping and resource allocation. And as soon as they are ready, we'll launch more additional schools. But that's the future. Uh, we can't have all our schools doing the same thing. Each and every school needs to specialize because if you do that, you attract talent, you identify talent, you nurture it, and you release it to the economic market, which is our ultimate goal, to ensure that the economic market can attract the best learners, but it also can develop its own. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Reports. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.